everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So we have another Heathkit SB220 in. Someone had their hands in this at some point, did all sorts of stuff to it. So, it needs a lot of stuff done. I'm going to go over everything one thing at a time. I might miss something, but I'll, I'll bring it up in the uh, last video when it's all done. So... Customer said a couple of the diodes had failed on the other board, the other Harbach board, so he tried to assemble one, and unfortunately there are a lot of bad solder joints here, so look carefully down here, right there, I don't see any solder, maybe a teeny bit, I mean, they're like that all over the place, if you look, it's hard to see, but back, I'll, I'll show when I... I'm going to have to take the board out, and I'll, I'll show it, so maybe I'll have another video after this um, for the final video. So you have the high voltage wire coming off the board, and it was extended, and I went to pull on it, broke right off, a bad solder joint. Plate tune, air variable cap, looks okay, load side looks okay, band switch contacts look okay. Someone added another padding cap for the 80 meter position on the band switch, which puts capacitance in parallel with the load side. So I'll deal with that. It has the other one in there too. Looks like, I don't know if they hit this with the soldering iron or what. It's the cap at the base of the plate choke, but it's all black over here. I'll have to deal with that. I'll change the plate blocker like I always do someone put the RO measure stuff in all of this that's RO measures this is some other stuff that I bought that's gonna come out I'll redo that so it's different meter lamps they're probably LED new Harbach fan I think it's a Harbach fan it's a Harbach filter cap board solder joints look okay on the side here but uh so I'm gonna flip it over and I'll show you the bottom so probably have four parts to this repair okay so be right back so here's the bottom customer said he changed the circuit breakers so bad solder joints I'll redo all that has the bypass caps here connected to the ground here, the line cord. But this this is supposed this tab here is supposed to be connected to the chassis over here. And the, these uh, bypass caps also connect to that same point. So we put the soft key in. He had the soft start in but he had a short pawn startup and he blew the resistors or one of the resistors or both resistors up so he removed that self changed the uh, paper and oil cap here I'll change that uh, doorknob cap was added I'm guessing to try to get the feed through STBR down but it's it's in the wrong spot it's supposed to be in the normally closed connection so it's only in line when the amp is not keyed. Right now it's in parallel with the output and uh, the low tuner for the output. So I'll take that out. And that's overkill. If, it, if the feed through is really high, I can add some mica caps. Uh, so this resistor was added by somebody and it's in line with the cap here coming off the Coax from the input circuit, so the series that's going to come out, redo all that. Customer tried to ground the grids, but bad solder joints, I'm going to redo that. Oh boy. So. These new SO239s, as you can see, just slips right in and out. Lots of little stuff. 
the bias mod has not been done. I'll do that. Looks like this wire is marked up a little bit. I'll make sure the insulation's okay. It's right up against the metal. So, uh, lot, lots to do here. So I'm going to get to work, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. Remove the board. You can see the areas on this side lacking solder. There it is. And then on this side, I agree here. Corresponding spot spots. So it's like that on both sides. It's not like it was like there's solder on one side and then none on the other side in that same spot. So if that were the case, it would be okay. But I I'm gonna reflow solder to every joint, both sides, double sided board. Always make sure both sides have it. So I'm gonna get back to work. See you guys soon. Okay, so I fixed all the solder joints, cleaned up all the holes for the wires, and I'm going to reinstall it. I'm also going to change the B positive wire coming off the filter cap board. Okay, see you soon. I noticed that the secondary lead coming off the transformer had this, I guess, I don't think it's electrical tape, some very, it's really thin like tape, something else, vinyl tape or something, I don't know. Like that, it's just really thin. So, someone repaired the secondary lead at some point. They soldered a new lead. They must have cut it by accident, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? So, anyway, solder joint looks okay, but I'm going to add more insulation with heat shrink. I'll triple up on it. So, little things like that, you know, I just always want to make sure things are correct. And I don't know how, this has a solid conductor in it, so I don't know how many times it's been bent. This is the B positive coming off the rectifier, off the filter cap board, you know, connecting to the rectifier. So I'm going to replace that with a new piece of uh, high voltage wire. So I'm going to get back to work. See, so board's back in. So I triple insulated that wire coming off the secondary side of the plate transformer. Got the new B positive wire here. The wires are resoldered to the board. Soldered both sides. I flowed the solder through. Got the series glitch resistor over here. Things all zip tied real nice. I always take the outer nut off, then the inner, and snug them up. There's like a fiber washer that's always um, either broken apart or shrunk over the years so it's all set to see all that so I'm gonna put the side panel back on and uh, get back to work so see you soon okay so I'm all finished with the SB 220 tested it on all bands works as it should I'll go over everything I did so Cleaned up this whole area, did everything I showed before. Cleaned the input rotary switch with deoxy gold. Cleaned the output rotary switch with deoxy gold. Installed a new bypass cap at the base of the plate choke. Put a ceramic type in, brand new plate blocking cap. Brand new parasitic suppressors, put the proper strap in. So I will flip it over and show you the bottom. Be right back. Okay, so I touched up on a whole bunch of solder joints. The bypass caps were on, one was on the wrong side of one of the breakers, so they're both on the proper side now. I always put a little bit of silicone between one and the chassis to keep it from moving around and possibly touching the chassis. I put the uh, solder tab over there, back in the corner. And it's re-secured to one of the transformer screws. The ground is now bonded to the chassis. Changed the electrolytic cap over here. Did the bias modification. 
brought the wire that powers the coil of the relay around the relay. It's all zip tied. Everything zip tied nice nice. Put the proper gauge wire in for the terminal strip. Changed the SO239 connectors. I redid the tab assembly here. So that's all correct now. Got rid of that resistor setup. Snugged up on all the kept nuts. The customer had put these straps in and I go always go in there with a ratchet and snug them up tight. Uh, resoldered all the copper straps to the grid tabs. Resoldered the wires to the switch over here. Resoldered all these wires over here. And uh, that's about it. Just a lot of, lot of time here. I also put some silicone between the center insulator of the output coax and the chassis because it's about uh, a little over a quarter inch between the center conductor and ground, but just in case, I don't think it would ever move, but you know, just in case keeps it from getting close. I resoldered the center conductor wire to the relay and uh, just lots of solder touch-ups and all sorts of other stuff. So this thing is all set. So if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. Phone number is 203-892-4119. That's 203-892-4119. I also clean the TR slash bias relay with Deoxygold. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.